but I hate to tell you this, but I'm supposed to be hosting this video. Today's video is sponsored by PetFlow. Click thumbs up for Bourbon, the Australian cattle dog. She's joining me today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Bourbon, you're supposed to herd cattle. I'm not a cattle. Pick up a copy of America's number one best-selling dog training book, Dog Training Revolution, and follow us on Instagram to keep up with us between videos. Today, Bourbon and I are gonna take a few of your questions, and I wanna thank our awesome sponsor, PetFlow. Yeah, I know, they are awesome, aren't they? By changing the way you buy your dog food, you're helping to change the way people think about training dogs. You can save a ton of time by setting up automatic pet food delivery from PetFlow. Choose your dog's favorite brand of food. <coughs> yes, tell PetFlow how often you want it to be delivered. <coughs> and enter code ZACK30, ZACK30, when you check out for $10 off your first three orders. I'll have PetFlow's link and details in the description. The questions I've selected today come from YouTube, Patreon, Facebook, and all over the place. So wherever you guys follow us, we pay attention. The first question comes from Malak Hasham, and they are asking about indoor potty training tips. So when you're training your dog to do their business inside instead of outside, there's really not a whole lot of difference. I mean, instead of taking them outside to the grass, you would obviously take them to the area where they're supposed to do their business inside. So it could be something like a puppy pad or any other designated area that you've determined to be an acceptable place for them to pee and poop. A lot of people have a need for their dog to go inside the house, maybe because they live in a giant apartment and it's very inconvenient to take them out, but other people do it as a means of convenience so they don't have to let their dog out as much. But if you are going to do this, you still have to really follow through on your training and keep your dog on leash and strictly control their environment at all times. So in other words, just because you're allowing them to go to a designated place inside the house doesn't mean that you should just assume that they're supposed to figure that out. You need to definitely be proactive about taking them there and showing them the proper place to go for the first year of training. With all potty training, you cannot slack on controlling the environment or let your guard down at all. This next question comes from Michael Shane. Michael says, I have a puppy who doesn't like to walk outside and she'll lie down on the grass and I have to pull her until she starts to walk. Okay, well, in general, it's a good idea not to pull your dog to force them. That's only likely to kind of increase their anxiety, but I know exactly what you're talking about, Michael. It is really common, especially with puppies, for them to freeze up, especially if they're new to a leash and a harness, because that's a weird feeling, and they don't really understand this whole idea of being tethered to a person just yet. So it's important to be really patient and understanding with them. So many different things can throw a dog off when they're new to the world. It could be something as simple as a different surface. Maybe they're not used to grass or concrete or wood or carpet or any other number of things. Could be as simple as some new smell that they've never sensed before at a park that really catches their attention and they may not be so eager to go on a walk. They'd rather kind of stay right here and check out this new setting, for example. New surfaces, sounds, and sights really can throw dogs off, especially when they're young. So some things that you can do to encourage your dog to walk with you on leash are, of course, to lure them with really high value treats. Consider real meat over regular dog treats. That's gonna give you a more of an edge when you're competing with lots of distractions. Getting peppier and getting more enthusiastic and excited with your dog is also likely to encourage them to be more playful. But you can't really rush this. It's important to take your dog to these new places and new areas wherever you're struggling with them on leash walking and just be patient. Let them walk around. Let them take in the new place and the environment. Our next question comes from Paul Deepak. I have a five week old golden retriever. When should I start training? Five weeks is pretty young to start training. See, it's ideal for a dog to be with their mother for the first 10 weeks or so of their life because they learn social skills from their litter mates <coughs> and from their mom that can really help them throughout their life. Nonetheless, some dogs do get separated from their mom or get lost or abandoned or any number of reasons. If you find yourself in this position with a super young dog, it's important to make sure that they get plenty of time with people and other vaccinated dogs so that they can really acquire some of those social skills that are necessary. But you can start to focus on some basic easy training like lure training, sit, lie down, maybe an easy stay, maybe even some fun tricks at around eight to 10 weeks or so. This next question is from Patty MacArthur. My dog plays keep away with fetch. Running away helps, but what else can I do? Patty, I love that you're teaching your dog fetch and playing chase running away from them like you described is a wonderful way to teach a dog to bring a toy back to you, but it's not foolproof. See, keep away is a really natural game for dogs. In fact, it's one of the most natural games they know how to play, that and tug of war for many dogs. So we can't fault them for doing something that's natural to them. So many people really try to bypass using a long lead, say, 
20 feet or so when teaching fetch. They think, eh, I can probably get by with it because my dog's somewhat compliant. But even as I have bourbon on a leash right here, right now, you know, right there, she tried to pull away. This is my fail safe so I can gain control. The first thing to keep in mind when you're trying to bring any bad habit to an end is to make it impossible to occur. Your dog can't run away if you have them on a lead. And see, look, as I throw it, I'm grabbing the lead here on the ground just in case she decides to go in the other direction to try and initiate a game of keep away. Let go. Get it. See, picking up the lead the second I throw it. I'm just keeping her from running away. The leash is best used as a safety net. Once your dog comes to really appreciate and enjoy the thrilling game of fetch, they're a lot more likely to avoid running around because, hey, chasing it, bringing it back in a straight line turns out to be much more fulfilling than running around aimlessly. Plus, that's the only way that the game will continue to go on is when they play it correctly. As your dog tends to become a bit more reliable, you can start to phase out the long lead, but even for insurance, it's a good idea to keep that long lead on them even longer than you might expect to, just to make sure that if there are any relapses, you're there to keep the bad habit from getting established. Make sure you follow us on Instagram to keep up with us between episodes of the Dog Training Revolution. Pick up a copy of my book too if you've got a new dog or you just want a handy guide to everything you need to know about raising your new dog. Subscribe to my channel and set up automatic pet food delivery at PetFlow. And you'll be all set. Bourbon, you did a good job today. I don't think I could have answered those questions without you. See you guys in the next video.